This person had some things to say in defense of a Mormon prophet saying that black people are part of an inferior race because they were less valiant in the pre-existence. They said that for one thing, not everything a prophet says is from God. Sometimes they're just expressing their own opinion. And in this comment, they ask, did the prophet say that God himself told him that or was that just his opinion? Let's talk about it. There are examples of this racist doctrine in many books. I'm gonna show you a few of them. We're actually going to start here with a book that is not written by a Mormon leader, but has many quotes from Mormon leaders in it. And the person that wrote this book was writing it in defense of Mormon doctrine. This word right here was commonly accepted during this time period, and obviously it's not anymore. There's a different connotation. Now from what I've seen, most people feel like it is okay to use this word in the historical context, but I still personally just don't feel comfortable with that, so I will bleep it out. In the above scripture from Abraham then, we have a reliable account of the early genealogy of the black race, and in Abraham's comments, we have further evidence of the divine direction in the LDS church policy of not allowing the seed of Cain and Ham to bear the priesthood. This divinely directed policy has been reaffirmed by the church leaders in our day. In answering the letter of a prominent Mormon critical of church policy in this matter, the first presidency of the LDS church a few years ago wrote as follows. As you should be aware, the first presidency of the church is the prophet and his two most important counselors. So this is coming directly from the leader of the church. From the days of the prophet Joseph, even until now, it has been the doctrine of the church, never questioned by any of the church leaders, that the blessed are not entitled to the full blessings of the gospel. Furthermore, your ideas as we understand them appear to contemplate the intermarriage of the blessed and white races, a concept which has heretofore been most repugnant to most normal-minded people from the ancient patriarchs till now. We are not unmindful of the fact that there is a growing tendency, particularly among some educators, as it manifests itself in this area, toward the breaking down of race barriers in the matter of intermarriage between whites and blacks, but it does not have the sanction of the church and is contrary to church doctrine. As the latest edition of this book goes to press, September 1963, it might be of help to the reader to note that amid the greatly increasing public interests in this subject, LDS leaders have steadfastly reiterated this church doctrine. President Joseph Fielding Smith, outstanding LDS theologian who treated the subject in his book, The Way to Perfection, this one, published nearly 30 years ago, has again emphasized in 1963 that the status of the book has not changed. The gift of salvation is open to every human creature. Baptism and confirmation constitute the way into the celestial kingdom of God. This can be obtained by any human individual, white, black, or of any other hue, on condition of repentance. The church has never denied the place in the celestial kingdom if he will repent and accept the gospel. The restriction in relation to the priesthood is another matter. It is not the authorities of this church who have placed a restriction on him regarding the holding of the priesthood. It was not the prophet Joseph Smith nor Brigham Young. It was the Lord. And President Henry D. Moyle observes that there is a difference between designation and discrimination. It's the Lord's priesthood, and he has the power to designate to whom it shall be given. And that power of designation has never been given to man. Therefore, there can be no discrimination among men dealing with the power over which they have no right to designate. Similar statements have been made recently by President David O. McKay and several other leaders of the church, reaffirming this LDS doctrine and stressing the fact that, as President Smith says, no other church offers the so much. Those apologizers and critics who say that the church is unjust in refusing to permit the to hold the priesthood might ask themselves this question. In our society today, from which situation is the suffering most? One, in not being permitted to hold the priesthood in the LDS church, or two, in having black skin and other features which stigmatize him in the eyes of most whites. The answer is obvious. And who controls the fact of having these features? His creator, of course. When God allows a spirit to take on a body, do you suppose he is unaware of the fact that he will suffer a social stigma? Therefore, if you say this church is unjust in not allowing the to bear the priesthood, you must, to be consistent, likewise say that God is even more unjust in giving him a black skin. They blame the discrimination on God. They say it's not discrimination if God says so. He referenced this book, The Way to Perfection, by Prophet Joseph Fielding Smith. This is what I was specifically quoting in the video that you commented on. Not only was Cain called upon to suffer, but because of his wickedness, he became the father of an inferior race. 
A curse was placed upon him, and that curse has been continued through his lineage and must do so while time endures. Millions of souls have come into this world cursed with a black skin and have been denied the privilege of the priesthood and the fullness of the blessings of the gospel. These are the descendants of Cain. Moreover, they have been made to feel their inferiority and have been separated from the rest of mankind from the beginning. And by the way, this book that was written by an LDS prophet was published by a publishing company owned by the LDS church. It was then sold in the church's bookstore for decades and eventually made its way into an LDS seminary library. Once again, from the prophet of the LDS church, Joseph Fielding Smith in Doctrines of Salvation. There is a reason why one man is born black and with other disadvantages, while another is born white with great advantages. The reason is that we once had an estate before we came here and were obedient, more or less, to the laws that were given us there. Those who were faithful in all things there received greater blessings here, and those who were not faithful received less. AKA, if you were not faithful in the pre-existence, you came to earth with black skin. Regarding the Mormon war in heaven, he said this, All took sides either with Christ or with Satan. Every man had his agency there, and men received rewards here based upon their actions there, just as they will receive rewards hereafter for deeds done in the body. The evidently is receiving the reward he merits. Another one, written by a Mormon apostle, published by a publishing company owned by the church, and put in the church's bookstore for decades. This book is also often quoted in LDS church lessons that are still on the church's website today. Again, speaking about the war in heaven. Of the two-thirds who followed Christ, however, some were more valiant than others. Those who were less valiant in the pre-existence and who thereby had certain spiritual restrictions imposed upon them during mortality are known to us as the black. Such spirits are sent to earth through the lineage of Cain, the mark put upon him for his rebellion against God and his murder of Abel being a black skin. This life are denied the priesthood. Under no circumstances can they hold this delegation of authority from the Almighty. Are not equal with other races where the receipt of certain spiritual blessings are concerned, particularly the priesthood and the temple blessings that flow therefrom. But this inequality is not of man's origin. It is the Lord's doing. So to answer your question, did the prophet say that God told him to say that? Yes, he did. Not only did church leaders write these opinions in their books that were literally written to be educational about the LDS church and then they published them through their own publishing company, when other better Mormons started criticizing them for this racist doctrine, more racist members of the church took up the call to defend the church. And it wasn't just in their books. This, of course, is an official statement from the first presidency of the church. You're right that the leaders of the church weren't the only racist people around. There are still racist people around. But like we read in this book, there were better Mormons who were criticizing that racism even way back then. It's not that the leaders of the church were uniquely racist. It was that they weren't uniquely not racist. For anybody wondering why I continue to make videos like this, even though I've made videos like this in the past, I've seen a few people comment that, I mean, you already did a video about this. You already shared this quote. Not every person sees every video I do. And the older videos tend to get buried and not get views anymore, but this is really important and I want people to see it. So if I keep pushing videos out that say these kinds of things, that is why.